Last time we looked at a scenario where you had a party um, and you wanted the ratio of boys to girls at your party to be 1 to 3. What this meant was that in every time we have one boy, we have three girls. So if, for example, we wanted to have four boys at the party, then we'd have to have four groups of three girls. In other words, we'd have to have 12 girls. Okay, so now the minute we have this ratio, this 1 to 3 ratio for boys to girls, we've got two other ratios we can write down immediately. And let me show you how. Let's have a look at a typical group. In each group, for one boy, you have three girls. But you could also then say, well, in every group where you've got four children, there should be one boy, and out of every group of four children, you should have three girls. So we can write down those two ratios. We can say at this party, the ratio of boys to children is that in every group of four children, there is one boy. And similarly, we could talk about the ratio of girls to children, because there, in every group of four children, there are three girls. So, from a single ratio, we can get two other ratios that we can write down as well. And this allows us to answer a question like this. If we want 20 children at our party, how many girls? Well, now all we have to do is make sure we use the right ratio. And the ratio that relates girls to children is 3 to 4. So we say, all right, we know that in every group of four children, we want three girls. And how many children do we want at the party? Well, we want 20. So then we see here, what we have is that we have got five groups of four children. And so we need to have five groups of three girls. In other words, we need 15 girls. And we could, of course, then immediately say, we've got 15 girls, we have to have five boys. The other scenario I looked at was um, if the ratio of red uh, sweets to blue sweets is three to four, um, let's get the other ratios that we can write down immediately out of that one. Let's draw the picture, right? It always helps. What we've got as a picture for this ratio is for every three red sweets, we're going to have four blue sweets. Well, have a look then at how that pictures as a group of sweets. In every group of sweets, three of them will be red, four of them will be blue. We've got a group then of seven sweets. So we can write down our two ratios. We can say, if we look at each group of seven sweets, three of them will be red. And if we look at each group of seven sweets, four of them will be blue. And so now they can ask us all sorts of questions, right? They can tell us if I had, um, let's say, 21 red sweets. So they tell us that I've got 21 red sweets. And they want to know how many sweets then I would have in total. Well, I know that the ratio of red sweets to sweets in total is 3 to 7. I have got times 7 here, so I'll have to multiply by 7 here, and I'll get 49, right? They can ask us any kind of question. All we have to do is choose the appropriate ratio to work from. Okay, sometimes they can give us the information sort of almost the other way around. So let's say they talk about, in my class, the ratio of boys to children is 2 to 3. Well, what does that mean? It means that in every group of three children, two of them are boys. So if we want to, we can draw a little picture, right? You've got a group of three children. And in every group of three children like that, two of them will be boys. 
So, of course, this must be a goal. So, let's write down the other two ratios we can immediately write down in this scenario. What is the ratio of boys to girls? Well, we can see from our picture that for every two boys, you have one girl. And then the other ratio we might want to write down is the ratio of girls to children. And from our picture, we can see in every little group of three children, we have one girl. So the pictures really help. Once you've got these ratios, then it's very easy to work out any problem that they tell us, right? If you've got a class say, of 30 children, well, immediately you, want, you can work out how many boys. You go to this one here and you say, okay, 30 children, it'll be 20 boys, right? You just choose the appropriate ratio and it's very easy to work out. Okay, last example. If I want to make a strawberry milkshake for myself and the instructions tell me that I need to mix the milkshake syrup uh, in with the milk in a ratio of three is to five, what does that mean? Well, it means that if I want to make a delicious milkshake, for every three units of syrup I put in, I need to put in five units of milk. Now, we can easily write our other two ratios out of that because we can look at milkshake syrup to the overall finally mixed milkshake and let's have a look here in the finally mixed milkshake there will be three plus five eight units and of those three of them will be the syrup and we can similarly look at the ratio of milk in the final completed milkshake. Again, there are eight units in the final completed milkshake and five of them will be milk. So now we can answer a question like the one that's in your homework book, which is that you want to make four liters of milkshake. And we want to know how much syrup do you need to go and buy and how much milk do you need to go buy. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is just to remember that 4 litres is 4,000 millilitres. So let's operate with 4,000 millilitres. Pause the video now and work out for me how much syrup you need and how much milk you'll need. Okay, so let's work out the syrup first. You want 4,000 millilitres of milkshake. What have you done here? Well, you know eight fives are 40, so this will be multiplied by 500. And so you need to multiply this by 500, and so three times 500 is 1,500 millilitres. And for the milk, well, you can do it in two ways. You can either say, well, if you need 1500 milliliters of milkshake syrup, just subtract it from the 4,000 to get the milk. Or you can do it using the ratio. You know you want it to get up to 4,000 milliliters, and that's obviously a multiply by 500. So you've got to multiply this one by 500 as well, and you'll get 2,500 milliliters. So you need 2,500 milliliters of milk and 1,500 milliliters of milkshake syrup.